Are you silly, generous, and opinionated? Or creative, adventurous, and studious? Want to know which book interrupted member you're most like? Try visiting www.bookinterrupted.com slash members to find out. Book Interrupted is running another contest. We're giving away a one-year membership to Masterclass. Is there a passion project you've always wanted to pursue? To find out more, go to www.bookinterrupted.com slash contests. Parental guidance is recommended because this episode has mature topics and strong language. Here are some moments you can look forward to during this episode of Book Interrupted. And how some language, which is like pretty standard in our society, is more violent for people that can't take my pick up your damn socks. Applies that you assume that peace is not an option if you also share your truth. It takes me a while to be like, why am I so irritated at everyone? (laughs) And underwear. It will come out. (laughs) And uh, the black box have gone forever. My body and soul. Disrupted. Mind, body, and soul. Uh, Inspiration is the uh, And we're gonna talk it uh, out. On Book Interrupted. Welcome to Book Interrupted, a book club for busy people to connect and one that celebrates life's interruptions. Hi, I'm Sarah. I started Book Interrupted and asked the closest people to me to be part of it. First, I asked my sister. Hi, I'm Meredith. The sister. My first friend. Hi, I'm Kim, the first friend. My old roommate. Hi, I'm Lindsay, the old roommate. My high school friend. Hi, I'm Kara, the high school friend. My good friend and Kara's sister. That's me. Hi, I'm Leah, Sarah's friend, Kara's sister, and the final member of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to join along, this book cycle is from June 20th to July 25th. It's Meredith's book pick. And we're reading Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. Nonviolent communication illustrates how to use language to strengthen your relationships, build trust, prevent conflict, and heal. Nonviolent Communication, a Language of Life by Marshall B. Rosenberg, first edition, was released in 1999 and is now on its third edition, published in 2015. It has sold more than 3 million copies worldwide and has been translated into more than 35 languages. The book evolved from concepts of communication developed by Mr. Rosenberg in the 1960s and 70s. The Center for Nonviolent Communication, the CNVC, is a global nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing NVC around the world, offering training and certification. All right, so it's personal journal time. Let's see what the members of Book Interrupted thought outside the group. This is my first personal journal for the book Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. I found this book through a podcast that I listened to called Your Parenting Mojo. On episode 94, they started talking about nonviolent communication. And I've read a lot of the books they talk about on that show because that's just kind of what I like to do. I like to get a lot of information. I like the show because it's research-based. And, uh, you know, having been a stay-at-home mom for a while, raising kids was kind of my life. So anyway, I got this book to try to be a better communicator with my children and to also try to communicate to them and with them with respect because I want that for them. I want them to be able to have healthy and respectful relationships when they're older because I think that's how they're going to be happy. Anyway, so I read this book to try to help my kids and I found that it was really helpful for myself as well. And when I read it, I thought, well, I kind of want other people to read this too. Like I wish that everybody that I care for read this because I think it would help them. One of the basic concepts in this book is that every feeling you have is associated with either with a need. So the feelings we call good feelings are showing that a need has been met and our bad feelings are showing that there's a need that need that hasn't been met. And what I really like about this book is it has lists. It's got lists of different emotions you might be feeling. It's got lists of all the needs that humans have. And it really caused me to look inside and figure out what needs were not being met or were being met and to communicate that with with other people. Another part of this book that is so key is it invites the reader to also think about another person's needs and try to interpret 
you know, if somebody's talking to you and they, they haven't read nonviolent communication, it doesn't mean you can't talk to them and try to figure out what their needs are through nice questions and stuff like that. So I put some of these things to the test. I found that I was e able to connect with people in conversation that I have a hard time feeling like I'm connecting with them. You know, like there's some people I talk to a lot. And when we have a conversation, sometimes I just feel like they're just waiting for their turn to talk and they're not really listening to what I'm saying. And so I started trying to use some of the things from this book and I did make some real connections there. So instead of somebody just telling me a story, I was asking more astute questions and really trying to hear the human need and human feeling through their story. Anyway, it, it worked and I d was able to connect more than I had before. So I really like this book. I, I thought that I wanted some people in my life to read it as well. So I'm looking forward to re reading it again. In fact, when I first read the book, I got it from the library and I liked it so much that I bought it. I mean, if only for the lists of feelings and needs. And it just seems like, of course, you should know what your feelings and needs are. But let's be realistic. Other, a lot of people don't get taught about emotional intelligence. And I do find this very helpful in life. So I've been, it's kind of like this lifelong project myself. But I would like to have really good emotional intelligence. And I want that for my kids too. And everybody around me. Let's all just like know what we want and know how we feel and be happy and help each other. Okay. So, this is the first, hmm, maybe Marshall's a girl, but I think it's a male author. And, let me see. Yep, there he is. There's good old Marshall. I think this is a, well, this is the first male author we've done so far in uh, Book Interrupted, so I'm excited about that. I don't know why, I just am. I think this is going to be a good book for me. I think that this is probably just good, good useful skills, no matter who you are. It says empathy, collaboration, authenticity, and freedom. When you're busy judging people, you have no time to love them. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I am a really reactive person and I'm always trying to work on that because I don't want to be a reactive person. I want to be remembered as someone who's kind and calm and a good listener. That Wouldn't that be nice to like be thought of as, you know, your kids think of you as, oh, she was such a good listener. That's life goals. I want to be more, I want to move towards that more. And uh, it is not in my preset. I am not great at that. So I really want to, I want to try. And I bet you this one has some good old fashioned tips. It's also an excellent follow to white fragility because white fragility is all about kind of communication between the races and what we're doing and saying and acting out without being aware of ourselves. And this, I think, piggybacks onto that perfectly in a different way. I haven't read it yet, but okay. So at the top, it says, if violent means acting in a way that results in hurt or harm, then much of how we communicate could indeed be called violent communication. So like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know, this is going to help. This is going to be helpful. Uh, tips and tricks. To stay married, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm like, that's really the only communications I have in my life that are clunky, that hurt people is with my, with the old hubaroo. He's not a good communicator. I'm an aggressively over communicator and I'm loud and he is quiet. Yeah, I could, uh, I'd like to catch some of what he got. So that's my intro and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay. So. Personal journal number one for nonviolent communication. So I don't really know much about this book other than what my sister has already told me. She loves this book and thinks everybody should read it. I've only read The Ford so far by Deepak Chopra, but I really like Deepak Chopra. So I think I'm really going to like this book. Some of the things in The Ford made me think, like he mentioned Gandhi, he mentioned just because it's common, it's not normal, just kind of like seeing red, the tagline I really liked in that book. But basically, that this guy founded mediation. So when he wrote the foreword, though, he had died six weeks before at 80. So anyway, I'm looking forward to reading the book. And I think I'm really going to like it. So I guess we'll see. I am into nonviolent communication. Well, not specifically nonviolent communication as far as a brand associated with this book. But I'm into effective communication, I guess, would be more appropriate. 
and I've only just begun reading nonviolent communication, but um, it's kind of boring to me because I feel like it's just repackaging the messages of effective communication that I've already taken time to learn over my lifetime so far. I will continue reading the book to see if there is other information in there that is novel or new to me. But right now I'm kind of turned off because I feel like it's just, um, like I said, a repackaging of uh, the common lessons of effective communication. And so it makes me feel... I don't know. I want to say oppositional, but that's not right. It makes me feel like the need to argue with it, though, because I'm like, well, this is already said here or whatever. So I'm not super excited about it. I was hoping it was going to be something different. It focuses on iMessages, which, again, I think is standard communication practices rather than projecting out to how someone else might have done something to you. You take ownership for how you feel about something. And then it says, you you know, you express your need and it's really um, focuses on on being non-confrontational, I guess. So that's good. I don't know. I'm suspicious. It raises suspicion in me. Again, I'm only in the very beginning of the book, but for some reason, I'm suspicious of its content or message. I recognize its messages as examples of ways to effectively communicate. So it's not that I think that the message is like wrong or incorrect. Maybe it's incomplete. I'm not sure. I get. I guess I have to read more of the book, but right now it does not make me feel open. It makes me feel closed. So anyway, that's where I'm at with um, nonviolent communication thus far. I will have to check back in once I get a little bit more of the book digested. Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. That's all the communication I have left to provide at this moment in time. Uh, this is Meredith's book choice. And uh, I didn't really know anything about this book before I started, um, actually less than probably all the other books that everybody chose. So I thought I would do a little research. So Laird and I laid in bed last night and we're watching videos of uh, Marshall B. Rosen, Rosen, Rosenberg. And oh my gosh, he's just, he reminds me so much of Mr. Rogers. He's got this very calm vibe and he has these puppets. He's got a, a um, giraffe and a jackal. And I think the giraffe is like the good, the way you should be listening and the jackal's the bad. I don't know. I, I haven't really got into it, but um, he's definitely got a great vibe. And uh, he plays the guitar. I do also realize that they do have a center for nonviolent communication and they do have people who are certified in this to uh, travel and teach people. I've also read a little bit of negativity towards it being a, uh, could be considered tone policing. It's also considered a, a very difficult to learn and a lot you have to really devote a lot of time to learning this way of communicating. So I also just am not 100% sure that it's going to be for me because I'm a direct person. I like to say what I want to say. I want to say it with the least amount of words possible. This is what I mean. You react. This is what you mean. Great. We're all good. So I wonder how I'll feel about having to be talk around things. But I also think it might be great for me because, you know, working in the service industry and dealing with uh, people all the time, any way for me to uh, speak or, or communicate nonviolently when someone is yelling at me uh, is great. <laughs> so great. I'll let you know what I feel once I've started reading it. We'll see you then. Oh, my gosh. I was uh, joking around uh, with Meredith telling her <laughs> that I was like, you know what? I'm starting to notice a trend here that all of the books that we have selected for the book club podcast, Book Interrupted, that I'm starting to notice a theme that for every book we've chosen, it is this really interesting phenomenon of the book arrives at the exact moment that I am ready for it, that life is kind of progressing in a way that is in alignment with this book cycle. And it's incredibly fascinating and interesting. And I thought about it, I was like, well, am I making it so? Like, am I making it that my life lessons just happen to fit, to pair nicely uh, with these books? And I mean, who knows, right? Who knows for realsies? But it is pretty darn interesting. So I am quite excited uh, to read this book. Uh, I took a quick peruse through it 
It looks like it could be a bit of a dry read, but I don't really mind that. I kind of uh, like changing it up when it comes to uh, what I'm listening to on audiobooks or podcasts or even what I am reading the good old fashioned way with an actual tangible book in your hands. So I can't wait. And then uh, the other uh, joking around that I did was, of course, with my sister, Leah. Um, she's <laughs> quite the comedian, but we had ourselves a good chuckle. Uh, she was sharing with me. She was like, well, I don't want to read this book. Like, what's the point? Like, if I can't use my words in a way that is manipulative and, you know, like only in truly a form can she uh, deliver such blows in such a comedic way. <laughs> because, you know, we do use our words uh, in a variety of ways. We can use them uh, to manipulate, to speak our truths. Um, and certainly when it comes to you know, relating and interacting with others. Uh, words have tremendous amounts of power. I forget what podcast uh, I was listening to, but it had this incredible woman on it who was talking about how humans are the only species that we actually get like a physiological measurable response when one hears a word and what that produces mentally, emotionally, physically, like somatics within the body. So <laughs> Leah, always making me laugh. It was nice to uh, share uh, some good chuckles with some good people about this book before diving into what is perhaps not a very funny topic. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out further. This interruption is brought to you by Unpublished. Do you want to know more about the members and in Book Interrupted? Go behind the scenes? Visit our website at www.bookinterrupted.com. Book Interrupted. This is my first personal journal for the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. This is my book pick. I first, uh, I'm so nervous all the time. That's my interruption. I'm so nervous all the time. I find it really hard to talk to the camera. And I find it really hard to just imagine that somebody else is there. Uh, okay. Let's start again. This is my first personal journal. <laughs> I should get some water. Okay. Uh, this is what I did for the picture. I went like this and I pretended I was Kara and I said, what did I say? Project your voice, which you don't have to do for a picture, but I felt like it gave me confidence to go project your voice and I pretended that I was Kara because she goes on stage and does the improv and she's so confident in front of other people which is like the opposite of me I'm better in small groups okay so enough of that <laughs> I think I do feel better going project your voice okay I wonder if Kara will like that I think I'll leave that in there in case you want to use that as an interruption Sarah <laughs> book interrupted Let's listen in to this episode's group discussion. This book cycle, we're going to be doing my book choice, which is Nonviolent Communication by Marshall B. Rosenberg. And I first came to this book from a podcast I listened to called Your Parenting Mojo. And on episode 94, it's about using nonviolent communication. And it really uh, spoke to me. It's about communicating mindfully with compassion and actually getting in tune with your feelings and the language we use and how some language, which is like pretty standard in our society, is more violent. Like you made me feel where you're putting blame uh, on others for your feelings. And so I read this book to try to be a better parent, I guess. One of my biggest parenting goals is to help my children learn how to form and maintain healthy relationships because I think that's the key to happiness in life. And I found that this book was super helpful for me, which is why I've recommended it here. And it's uh, pretty easy. It gives you like steps on what to do. One of the best parts about the book is it has a list of feelings that you might be feeling. So <laughs> good feelings, bad feelings, but not good feelings, bad feelings. It's all about, it basically says that if you're feeling something, it's because either a need is being fulfilled or not fulfilled. Then if you can name your feeling, you can try to figure out what, you're, what you need and then go from there. Ask for people to help fulfill your needs. Anyway, so that's what this book is all about. I'm really excited about it. I like that because it takes me a long time to figure out why I'm in a bad mood if I'm in a bad mood, because usually it has nothing to do with what's actually happening, but something I'm suppressing feeling-wise. But then it takes me a minute to be like, oh... 
I'm upset. Like I put in one of my blog posts. Oh, I'm upset because I don't get to see my mother at Christmas. And then I, then I proceeded to cry for like an hour or something, but it takes me a while to be like, why am I so irritated at everyone for no reason? Like this wouldn't have irritated me, you know, last week, but it is, it's because something's happening. Something else is happening. Right. So Mm -hmm. I can't wait to read this book. I can really relate to what you've said, Sarah, because that's where our like number nine Enneagram is so similar in that we are great peacemakers. We're wonderful contributions to teams or families and trying to get people all on the same page. But there is another part of it, which is sometimes it's challenging to catch ourselves how we sweep things under the rug right? We've built up our character being able to be a bit more mutable and changeable to be like, no, no, it's all good. We can make, it's fine. We can make this work because like in reality, like you can make something work, right? But where does that line cross when it's, we're not allowing our own need to be fulfilled. And it's such an automatic process, at least for myself, that when there is potential conflict, whether it's internal or external, I don't catch myself until after I just go into this override of just sweep this under the rug and everything's fine. And no, no, we're good. We're good. So you're right. Like, even though I haven't read the whole book, it's so helpful in being able to get a bit closer into in this moment, I'm spazzing out, not actually because of what's happening right here, but because three days ago, I didn't acknowledge that I wasn't allowing my need to be fulfilled. I put the needs of others ahead of my own. Say, would your need then be just that you need peace or like acceptance? Is that the need? Peace. Peace. (laughs) Just need the peace. Yeah. For me, (laughs) yeah. I think mine is is always like, yeah, I'd rather. But you rather carry. Peace than anything else. And you rather carry internal turmoil. Yeah. Yes. So you're not peaceful on the inside. I always wonder this about quiet people because I'm married to a quiet person who stomachs all, all emotions to the black box. And <laughs> the black box have gone forever. And um, <laughs> I am not. I, I stomach nothing, which is also a problem. <laughs> but, <laughs> I always wonder this about the quiet people. Like, do they actually just not feel f- things like I feel things? Or are they just pushing it down? Like, I wonder, pushing like, down. I couldn't yeah. stand feeling things on the inside. I have to get them out of me. Or ignoring them. Sometimes I, I self my talk out of out of it really being a big deal. Like I don't know why you're getting so upset about this. Yeah, like, that's what it really is. It. Mm-hmm. Like, is this really worth mm-hmm. this? Like, to ruin the whole night. Yeah, and like that's how I talk myself out of it. But if it's a real need, I don't know if you if you if you if bees like this. But if mm-hmm. it's a re- something that's really upsetting and a real need, that won't work. And like Kara said, three or four days later, or a week later, or a month later, all of a sudden you're like snapping at everything and annoyed. For oh little yeah, things he like- snaps it like. He like <laughs> ripped his underwear off the other day because he got mad. It, it was like, he like, like it was like not fitting right. Yeah, like the Hulk. Whoa. It was so sexy. <laughs> no, no, no. This oh was like a little while ago. But like he has done things like that. Like he'll spaz out on little weird things like yep. his underwear, things that he can get yeah. mad, really like yeah. overly mad at. Because it's like more... pots and pans or gardening. Yeah. Like, oh, that stupid thing. Like all of a sudden I lose yeah. my mind when I'm gardening. Yeah. And mom would be like, what's happening over there? And I'm like, nothing. This thing is just broken and whatever. And he's like, yeah. Oh. It's okay. typically like yeah, it really about over uh, there. inanimate objects is usually and where it <laughs> co- and underwear it will underwear. come out. And yeah, it's just Leah that the motivator is yeah. it feels like it's more important to have the people and environment around you in a peaceful state. It feels intolerable for the environment or the people to be in an unpeaceful state. So we'll just suck it up and be like, and do like what Sarah said, like, well, really, is it that important for me to like speak up and address this right now? Like we would rather have the peaceful environment, peaceful people, and we'll just hold on to the tension within. I'm trying to change, but but that's the go-to. Yeah. I think that there's something to be said also about personal narrative in those circumstances, because there's an assessment of the situation that's happening. Like, oh, this it's more important to keep the peace here, which implies that you assume that peace is not an option if you also share your truth. Yup. Uh, Th- thanks, so, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. that, um, that, that informs your decision of, okay, so I'm going to choose to, whether consciously or unconsciously, talk myself out of my feeling 
so that I can maintain this peace that I don't think can be maintained with the addition of my feeling. So I think there's a, a heavy role for personal narratives or the stories we tell ourselves that plays into this as well. And the ironic the touches thing is, on that, yeah. I try to keep the peace. It might not be feel peaceful for the other person involved. And if you can, if everybody has the same basic fundamental needs, but they might be, you might fulfill those needs differently from person to person. Then if you can just figure out what each person's needs are, maybe this, you can figure out what to do and both people's needs are being fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, do you think Kara and Sarah, because the whole, I started reading the book. Sorry, Sarah, as <gasps> usual. And um, <laughs> I started it too. Like oh, okay. yeah, I did as well. Yeah. No, right. yeah, yeah. Um, so there, there's the four components of nonviolent communication are observations, feelings, needs, and requests. So if you were in that moment, could you, would you be able to say to whoever, I observe that you're doing this. I feel this this need, this is because this need is not being met. And would you please do this? Do you think that you would be able to do that in the moment or you don't know what the need is? So then therefore this isn't going to help. It just takes time for myself. It's time. not instantaneous and it depends on the other individual. There are some individuals where sure, it's, sure. so it's like, I'm not, that, we're talking like ideal. Yeah. Ideal circumstance, absolutely. Yeah, as long as it could be slow and steady. And I think with practice rounds, Sarah, we would probably, because we're both kind of committed to want to get better. I'm thinking in practice rounds, we'll get quicker and better at identifying. You guys should do it to each other. You said it's very like a la <laughs> cognitive behavioral therapy. So just like what Kim was saying, the book absolutely does get into, well, what is the narrative that's already going on in here? So I'd say, yeah, I think we can, Lindsay, do those four things, but it might be a hot mess in the learning curve. I was going to say, it better. really depends if I feel, and it's all about how I feel, are we in a conflict? Even though like I know from therapy, there's healthy conflict as well. But if I feel like we're in a conflict, there's no way in hell I could go through that. I yeah, because we're too, it's, you're so, our nervous system is like, it would shot. Be like you're in fight or flight. Yeah. yeah. Isn't could. that the point of the book is to teach you how to, in those yes. conflict situations to. Right. Maybe. So hopefully I could, but that's what I'm really excited with the book. So hopefully maybe this is the next step for me to learn. Like I can, I'm getting better that like maybe an hour later or the same evening, I could come back to something and be like, okay, so when this happened, which I, like even talking about going back to a situation makes me feel like I feel like n nervous and sweaty and like I'm going to throw up like yeah. so upsetting and like but I force myself to do it but it's only I only do it with people I feel safe doing it with and then occasionally like I have a really great partner who will be like if I take my anger out of the garden or something he'll be like no no but what's really going on over there like this has been a couple of days now and then I'll have to like usually for me because I'll go have a shower or something and I'll be like, oh. Everything gets solved in the shower. That's why I'm upset. And then it'll be like an hour of crying or something. It'll be like, that's why I'm upset. <sighs> Whatever. And then I'm finally over it and then I can talk about it. But yeah, I think well, it I is really that sounds hard. very healthy, Sarah. That sounds like you're processing slowly, but that's, there's nothing wrong with slow. That sounds that's like why you you're your actually letting it out eventually. Yeah. You're moving through all, the whole wave of your emotion and you're not being reactive at all. That sounds really healthy to me. Yeah. I'm, but I'm, you can do that because you have a partner that's allowing you to. Yeah, safe. Yeah, <laughs> he's really easy yeah. to do it with. Yeah, um, I get But you. yeah, so that's, I, I'm, I'm working towards, so I'm excited about this book because I'm constantly trying to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I hope that this book will help me to understand people that are similar to my sister and Sarah and my husband, who's very similar to my sister. They're very similar people. And especially like how they process emotions so I can communicate because I'm so passionate about everything like fucking like the pickle is exciting you know like <laughs> the that, pickle is exciting the mm -hmm. pickle is I exciting. want one right now Ooh. I know they're so good what but, kind of um, pickle yeah oh, sure, full, what are they the full, full sour, sour. Oh, full, sour. Oh, full sour now I don't want oh they're so no, good. I know. my favorite pickle yeah but that's my, my hopes for pickle. reading this book is, is that I'll understand how other people process emotion better. Also, like I could probably use some of these skills, let's be honest. That's what I was saying, actually very similar to what, because I think you and I communicate more similar than 
uh, say Kara and Sarah. And Mm -hmm. I'm worried because for, like I was telling Lair, one of the examples was, uh, I see that you leave your socks on the floor. This makes me feel something like stressed and my need of a clean house isn't being met. So would you please pick up your socks? Mm -hmm. To me, I'm like, why don't I just say, pick up your damn fucking socks, (laughs) which is what I would do. Yeah. Um, So, and I've had to learn, especially with Sarah, because for me, I communicate with her differently than everybody else because I, I've i communicated with her the way that I communicate with everybody else. And she doesn't talk to me for better. I can tell she's like, okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, I can't. So now I'm like, we're fighting. Oh my God, we're fighting. And you're like, I don't think we're fighting. Just pick up your damn socks. Yes. <laughs> Our friendship is ruined forever. I love my socks out. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, oh, like I love yeah. you, Sarah. And you're so great at all of these things and da, da, da do you mind please if you would just pick up that one sock because it's kind of in my way or something, but it's okay if you can't. So but I do all that because I only do it for you or for maybe for Kara too, because I'm not doing it for me. So I'm hope maybe this book will help me also, like Leah said, communicate in a way for people that can't take my pick up your damn socks, but way of saying things. Yes. Because, but it also worries me because I'm like, why do I have to say so many extra words? Can't I just say what I mean? I, that was my initial reaction. Exactly. Totally. And then let's move on. Like, yeah, but like I, I said to Kara, when I, I started reading the book, I was, I was saying to Kara yesterday, <laughs> we were on the phone so and I was like, he talks a bit about like manipulation. Like you, why would you Word communicate in an authentic way that's not manipulating the situation? I was like, why would you? talk to anyone then I was like <laughs> if I, if I can't mani- manipulate people to get what I want then why would I even open my oh, mouth just <laughs> and then I like literally had to go to my notebook about the book like my notes a long way from my personal journals it was like I wrote it down and, I, and then underneath I underlined that's not healthy <laughs> I'll put the picture I'll take a picture of it and send it to our uh, group thing. So, so oh I was like, God. what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to see the video highlights from this episode, please go to our YouTube channel, Book Interrupted. You can also find our videos on www.bookinterrupted.com. The impact books have on our lives is not limited to the words written between the covers. Some books inspire new thoughts and send us to unexpected places. Follow me, Meredith, every Sunday as I descend further and further in my recurring blog segment, Down the Rabbit Hole, at www.bookinterrupted.com blog. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Book Interrupted. Moments you can look forward to on next week's Book Interrupted. There's so many things that we say dated every day that we say are feelings that aren't feelings. And this is how big my pain is. So you're fat. And I start bawling <laughs> my eyes out. I'm like, maybe it's this. I mean, I was bullied extremely as a kid. And you're right, because we don't go around like, Meredith, you made me happy. <laughs> Let's sew our skin together. <laughs> <laughs> Book interrupted. Never forget 215. Every child matters.